Peplink's new B1 entry-level mobile router packs a punch with a lot of features at a very aggressive price point. Is this something you care about? Come along with me, I'll tell you all about it. So Peplink is kind of known for their cellular embedded multi-WAN mobile routers, right? So they have cellular modems inside of them. This product is different, but it does have some tricks up its sleeve and it could be very promising for the mobile internet enthusiast. The B1 is essentially the replacement for the Soho series of entry-level uh, routers from Peplink. And for those of you familiar with the Peplink line, you may say to yourself that this looks a lot like a Balance 20X. And you wouldn't be wrong. This is essentially built on the Balance 20X chassis or platform to a large degree. The B1 at its core is a multi-WAN router. So it is a prime care device, meaning it has the licensing for speed fusion built into it. And it has multi-WANs or multiple internet sources that can come into it. Out of the box, you'll see right on this side, we've got WAN 1 and WAN 2. So we have two wired ethernet ports. And because of the changes to Peplink's licensing, as of some of their later firmwares, you actually get a virtual WAN, third WAN, that you can apply to one of these four LAN ports or kind of local area network ports that are typically normally reserved for plugging in your computers and other hardwired devices. But with this out of the box, you get WAN 1, WAN 2 that are licensed forever. And as long as you keep your prime care subscription up to date, another one of these ports can be unlocked, giving you a total of three wired WAN sources. And technically you could add more with additional licensing beyond that. So for what this is launched at, which is a $299 price point, you're talking about a multi-WAN router that technically is capable of bonding more than four wired internet, internet connections. That's pretty insane. Sticking with the WAN or internet inbound side of what you see on this device, I'll flip it around for a second, and you'll see a USB-C port here. And thankfully, that is not just a, that's not a port for like powering the device, which we've seen in some other devices like the Transit. This is a WAN port, and this allows you to tether a large number of devices by plugging them in with a USB-C cable. Maybe you're tethering with a phone or more you know, like a mobile hotspot that supports USB tethering, or um, you can use Peplink's Max adapter, USB Max adapters that plug right into that. And those are nice because they have um, external antenna ports and can really kind of round out your setup a bit more effectively than a hotspot. But that WAN port um, there, that USB WAN port, means that you can add cellular to this device. So you get a lot of expandability there. Moving on to the other side of the device, and I apologize if I call it the balance in this video, I'm just used to these balance uh, products being in this form factor, but this is the B1. On this side, we've got a Wi-Fi 6 um, dual channel Wi-Fi configuration built into this. So Wi-Fi 6 is a newer Wi-Fi technology than sort of the more traditional Wi-Fi 5, which has worked great, but Wi-Fi 6 tends to work a bit better in congested campgrounds. This is not connecting to cellular networks. Wireless here is broadcasting locally inside your RV to your devices, but that Wi-Fi 6 technology can help you a bit in congested areas. We're really glad they upgraded the Wi-Fi technology in this device. The B1 also packs an integrated wireless access point controller. So you can take external uh, access points from Peplink and manage them all on the central dashboard here. Um, external access points can also support mesh technology um, so that they can hand off to different devices for additional coverage or technically they can provide you a different additional coverage in areas where you can't run an ethernet cable. We like to see you run an ethernet cable from here to an access point because it'll run faster and better. But if you're in a pinch and you have a dead spot and you can't run an ethernet cable, this can manage an access point wirelessly so that from here, this wireless can repeat to another access point and all be centrally managed from the AP controller. 
as we said before, we've got four wired Ethernet LAN ports here for your devices, and those with licensing can be converted to WAN ports for additional functionality. On this side here, we see that Peplink is continuing the trend to move to that micro Molex power connector. So we've got our four pin power connector here, and uh, this is going to support the 12 volt input and direct wire input for vehicle applications if you're interested. You can pick up a direct wire cable kit that Peplink makes, or you can pick one up from Mobile Must Have. Ours is a bit cheaper, and ours includes an integrated fuse. Now, Peplink's includes the ability to use um, these two IP ports on the top for additional GPIO functionality. So there is some additional stuff you can do with those two second wired ports, but most people just use the lower two down here for power and our cable can save you a few bucks and get you that integrated fuse if that's what you're looking for. Just rounding out the physical aspects of the device, nice on this series chassis, you do have the integrated mounting applications down here so you can screw mount this right up to a wall. Um, so it does work quite well for vehicle mounted applications. And lastly, you've got a lock over here, uh, which is kind of your standard desk lock if you want to uh, secure the device further. On the front, you've got your standard uh, lights. You've got your status light that'll be solid red when it's booting up, blinking red if you've got kind of a problem, and then you've got your Wi-Fi light as well that'll tell you when your Wi-Fi antennas are enabled in your broadcasting Wi-Fi. And then last, you've got your paperclip reset button on the front there if you want to restore the device back to factory. For those of you wondering what this little tiny hole is above the USB-C port, it's actually a screw hole that allows you to secure in the USB-C cable with a proprietary cable that Peplink includes with their Max adapters. So you can use a standard USB-C cable, but if you do pick up a Max adapter, it's going to include a locking screw at the top that's going to just ensure that cable doesn't come out when you're on the road. So is this a mobile router? Well, the answer technically is no. When you look at this device, it is not technically hardened or kind of designed for the rugged in-vehicle applications and uses that you'll see with like the BR1 Pro or the Transit series. But if you're in a you know, marine application or in a motorhome application like this, we typically are living inside of these devices and they're climate controlled. So the you know, temperature fluctuations inside are more than fine for a device like this to operate. I've been operating the Balance 20X and other devices like the B1 for quite some time in an RV, and I've had no issues with lockups or freezing, even though this is not technically considered a vehicle mobile router. So who is this device for? That's a big question. Uh, it comes in at a lower price point, and it has a lot of features, but it's lacking that integrated cellular modem. And if you were going to add a 5G Max adapter that's quite pricey, you would probably be close to at the price of a, a BR1 uh, Pro 5G. So who's this device really for? In my opinion, the people that are going to benefit the most from this device are people with existing wired internet connections. Probably the most popular ones being T-Mobile Home Internet, which you can use with a mobile router like this, and Starlink. Starlink with an Ethernet adapter, or specifically the new Gen 3 dishes that have Ethernet ports finally back on the routers, can be put into bypass mode, which means that the included Starlink router will essentially just hand off the internet to a device like the Peplink B1. As of the latest firmwares with Peplink, you can use Starlink with these devices and they will actually show up on the Peplink dashboard with Starlink logos and they can allow you to get access to various Starlink features through that dashboard console. I don't tend to use a lot of those advanced features. It is kind of nice that it'll actually show status indicators like obstructed or other things related to my Starlink. But the point for me is that a device like this takes my Starlink, which is essentially a standalone device. The internet connection Starlink can use is Starlink. So if you park under a tree, if you're in motion, or if you're doing whatever, your, your internet connection's down when Starlink is down. With a multi-WAN router like this, you can take Starlink and integrate it with a USB cellular connection or with something like a T-Mobile Home through an Ethernet port or with 
a regular hotspot through USB or uplink through an ethernet port. And now you can start to have a central device that's providing Wi-Fi that you would connect your devices to. So in my case, this thing would be called RV Wi-Fi, right? So all my devices would connect to RV Wi-Fi. And then the router could help me pick whether I was using Starlink, T-Mobile Home Internet, or whatever else I've got plugged into these WAN ports. And I don't have to run around to all my TVs and all my devices and change the Wi-Fi from Starlink back to this, to this, to that. You don't have to deal with any of that. When you get a central command center like this, you can manage all of those various connections at a very low price point. Now I know I'm going to get this question, so I want to make sure I cover it. Could we bond or connect two Starlinks together with this device and get additional bandwidth with two Starlinks? Now, if you're willing to pay for two Starlink uh, connections, the answer is yes. You absolutely could have Starlink 1 and Starlink 2 connected inside of this mobile router. Um, by default, if you did that and you connected devices up to the Wi-Fi and you enabled both Starlinks here, the device would load balance the Starlinks, meaning some devices would go out the first Starlink, some devices would go out the second Starlink. Now, if you're looking to combine them together, the integrated speed fusion technology can bond them together into one more redundant resilient connection that can give you additional bandwidth as well. So should you go out and get two Starlinks because you don't love the reliability of the Starlink? That's not the direction I would go. Starlink could potentially give you more bandwidth if you have a ton of users or you're hosting a big music festival. This could be an interesting option for you. But if you're looking for redundancy and you want to get a more reliable internet connection, I would look to balance this out with another internet connection like a cellular connection. Now I know we're known kind of as the mobile internet people, but the B1 is really a device that is going to be extremely popular for small branch offices. And I'll probably be using these inside of my home offices to give me additional redundancy in my connections. I could absolutely see this being used in an office where you had a reliable internet connection. Maybe you wanted to add some additional bandwidth with a fiber connection or a cable modem or multiple connections where you just wanted to kind of beef up that voice over IP system or give yourself additional redundancy using that speed fusion technology. So this is just a killer router in terms of a multi-WAN router for the price point that you could use in a home office or kind of branch office application. Additionally, I think this would be very popular for rural home folks. Uh, if you're in a rural home application, maybe you've got Starlink and uh, the Starlink Wi-Fi is not cutting it for you. And maybe the Starlink bandwidth is not cutting it for you. In this situation, you could pick up a device like this. You could add multiple Starlinks or you could bond this with a cellular connection that you could um, either you know, get a, a fixed kind of Wi-Fi router from a cellular carrier or a small hotspot with the USB port to give you cellular backup. Um, you could honestly back it up with a DSL modem or something like that if you're in a real, really rural, rural application, but you have options here. And additionally, you can now, you know, get a Peplink wireless solution integrated into your rural home application. So maybe you've got a larger house and you need three or four access points to cover it all. You've got your Starlink, you're relying on that Starlink internet, but that single Wi-Fi 6 access point or Wi-Fi 5 if you've got a Starlink Gen 2 just isn't cutting it. And if you have to then integrate an OB, Orbi or one of these other Wi-Fi solutions, you've just got a lot of different management consoles to deal with. In this particular case, you'd be able to integrate your multiple you know, Starlink or cellular solutions and your wireless access points and view them all on a single pane of glass or dashboard to help manage them. I definitely see this being pretty big for rural home and small home office and branch office use. The B1 is eligible for membership discounts. And if you don't know about our memberships, I highly recommend you check them out at membership.mobilemusthave.com. You get discounts on pretty much everything at mobilemusthave.com, not just the internet stuff that we sell. You get upgraded shipping, typically two-day shipping on a device like this that's included free of charge. You get access to the Mobile Internet Resource Center where we have a plethora of guides, um, quite a few hours and hours of how 
how-to documentation on the PEPLINK line, an entire PEPLINK Resource Center that I've co-developed with the uh, founders of the Mobile Internet Resource Center. You get reward points that equal cash back and just a whole plethora of additional benefits that I highly recommend you check out. Also discounts on data plans, so that's a big one as well. The monthly discounts on data typically pay for the membership uh, within the first year, so I definitely recommend you check that out. If you're thinking about purchasing the B1 or you have any questions about the device, you can always pick up the phone and give us a ring. Our phone number is available at mobilemusthave.com. Just check on the top left-hand corner. You can also chat with us in the bottom right-hand corner of our site. Uh, the, the experts will be there and available to chat with you during business hours, or you can send us an email at info at mobilemusthave.com. Thank you guys so much for watching this overview of the PepLink B1, and we'll see you on the road.